Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome as we come together to celebrate this 22nd Sunday of the year. We come before the Lord knowing that we are in need of the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. For the times perhaps in these last days, we see those places in our lives that need this healing, let's now ask the Lord for the mercy and forgiveness we desire. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. My son, perform your tasks in meekness. Then you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. The greater you are, the more you must humble yourself, so you will find favor with God. There are many who are noble and renowned, but it is to the humble that he reveals his mysteries. For great is the might of the Lord, he is glorified by the humble. The affliction of the proud has no healing, for a plant of wickedness has taken root in them, though it will not be perceived. The mind of the wise man will ponder the words of the wise, and an attentive ear is the wise man's desire. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the poor. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the poor. The just shall rejoice at the presence of God. They shall exult with glad rejoicing. O oh, sing to God, make music to his name. The Lord is his name. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the poor. Father of orphans, defender of widows, such is God in his holy place. God gives the desolate a home to dwell in. He leads the prisoners forth into prosperity. In, in your goodness, goodness, O God, 
you provided for the poor. You poured down, O God, a generous rain. When your people languished, you restored their inheritance. It was there that your flock began to dwell. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the poor. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the poor. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers entreat that no further messages be spoken to them. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to a judge who is God of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Take my yoke upon you, says the Lord, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler who belonged to the Pharisees, they were watching him. Now he told a parable to those who were invited when he marked how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, When you're invited by anyone to a marriage feast, Do not sit down in a place of honor, lest a more eminent person than you be invited by them. And the one who invited you both will come and say to you, Give place to this person, and then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, they may say to you, Friend, go up higher, then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts themselves will be humbled, and the one who humbles themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited them, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers and sisters or your kinsmen or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder if you would ever invite Jesus to a dinner party at your house. Because if you read the Gospel of Luke very carefully, you may not jump to say yes to that question. The Pharisees don't seem to learn either, because this is the third time in the Gospel that they invite Jesus to a dinner. And it's the third time that things get a little bit awkward for the hosts, when Jesus 
kind of pushes an agenda that they are not going to be comfortable with. You see, Jesus is the kind of guest that we don't like having at a dinner party. He speaks his mind, and he is not afraid to upset the status quo at a dinner party. Sometimes I notice parents use the dinner table as a time to chat to their children, a moment perhaps of reflection and teaching. They muse over the day the events, the encounters that they have had, and they talk about it, and the children hopefully learn something. And in a sense, the modus operandi of Jesus is very similar to that of parents. He does not go for the gourmet food or for the music, but uses dinner parties as a time to hopefully get them to reflect and teach them something. And the gospel text we hear this weekend is no exception. I want to invite you to just notice a few things. The first one is we are told that when Jesus comes, they are all watching him. They are all observing him quite closely, looking at him. Maybe some were eager to learn from him. Or maybe he had a reputation of upsetting parties and they were simply waiting for that to happen. But our skills of observation, of looking, are very important. St. Ignatius Loyola teaches us that we should always put a good construct on that which we deserve, which we observe, on what others say, on what others do a good interpretation. And yet it seems if these Pharisees kind of observe Jesus quite closely, protecting their own territory, and they were always more inclined to put a negative spin on what Jesus had to say. And maybe the invitation for us is to ask ourselves, what is my default position? Do I observe others in a way that does put a good interpretation on what they say or do? Or do I observe others always seeking to be critical? You know, perceptions of others or the judgments that we make are very often inaccurate. How much misunderstanding happens in our relationships and in our world because simply we have observed something and made a judgment without putting a good interpretation on what what we see. The second thing it seems to me we're invited to look at is that word humble or humility, because Jesus says, don't go to the front and put yourself on the higher seats, but start at the lower seats and rather be invited higher. The word humility comes from humus, meaning earth. And so it's an invitation to be grounded, to be close to the earth, to be part of the earth that we are connected to. Every year on Ash Wednesday, we repeat that we are dust and unto dust we shall return. Because true humility reminds us that we are earthly people, that we are interconnected. We are connected by a whole universe. And because we are connected by a universe, we have responsibility. There's a strong challenge around the issue of social justice at this particular dinner party that Jesus goes to. All, Jesus seems to suggest, are equal in God's sight. God doesn't believe in some being higher than others. And notice the category of people that Jesus says we should invite around our table, the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind of the world. These, Jesus suggests, are our brothers and sisters. 
And yet that poor, that crippled, that lame can take on many guises, not just simply the physical things that we think of. At the banquet of life, at the table of the Eucharist, Christians are called to come humbly before the Lord, knowing that we are all interconnected and that most especially we should be going out to find those who are excluded and bring them in. Sometimes, perhaps, we find ourselves often doing the opposite. We find ways of keeping those undesirables out. We don't like to have people who are different to us around the table. Think of the many stories we hear in churches about people who are excluded, not always because they are crippled or lame or blind, but simply because they are different. They are foreigners or they belong to the LGBTI community or they are divorced or whatever the case may be. Jesus warns us today that we put ourselves at peril when we are not inclusive. The third invitation perhaps is for us to ask ourselves questions around the motives of our generosity. The Pharisees give Jesus a meal. It seems quite generous. It's a banquet, we are told. But this is an investment type of giving. They want something back. They give, Jesus suggests, in order to get. And Jesus tells them that they shouldn't be giving in order to get. And so I think we're invited too to reflect on our own motives. Jesus wants us to examine ourselves and ask ourselves, why do I choose to do or to be with the people that I am with? What is in it for me, perhaps, is the question that he's asking us to answer. And sometimes, perhaps, this happens subconsciously. Jesus wants us to poke that subconscious side of ourselves that may often think in that way. Jesus reveals through his own life that true giving is for the sake of giving and therefore not to get anything back, not to be investing in something. And the last thing perhaps we're invited to reflect on is that it is okay not to be okay. There seems to me to be quite a comforting angle to this gospel. Many of us, when it comes to God, think that we have to somehow give ourselves a makeover, make ourselves more acceptable to God. Today's gospel reminds us that it is not the socialites, the perfect, the high achievers who are most welcome at the Lord's banquet. Rather, it is the vulnerable, it is the people who have not given themselves a makeover. It reminds us that God embraces those parts of us that are in greatest need. The poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame that is in each one of us. Jesus tells his host that the poor and the broken should be at his table. And Jesus tells us too to do exactly that when we come around the table of the Eucharist. Rather than thinking we have to have it all right and we have to have a makeover, Jesus simply says to us, come as you are. And that reveals to us the heart of God. And that, I think, is what is really being said to us in this gospel text. As we celebrate this Eucharist today, as we look towards the week ahead, let's pray that our observances would be guided by, God, by God's observations. Let's pray that we would be humble 
before other people. Let's pray that we will not be afraid to confront our own selfish motives, but allow God to transform us so as to make our deepest desire to be for God's justice. And finally, let us take heart that it is okay not to be okay before the Lord. Let's pray together a profession of faith as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. He from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now, as we gather around this table of the Lord, make our own prayers humbly to our God. Let us pray for the grace to always put the best interpretation we can on the ways and deeds of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray that we, followers of Jesus, may be known for humility and generosity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the grace to come before the Lord, as we are knowing that God loves each of us as we are. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the poor and disadvantaged who are relegated to the last place in society that they may be treated with respect and dignity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all who hold public office, that they may not seek their own glory, but to serve others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray in a moment of silence for all who have asked us to pray for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that we can make our prayers known to you. And we know that you answer them as you know best through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Human nature. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and effort of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our lives. 
sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of the church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life, and being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and though time and time again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. As they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the cup filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one cup, they may be gathered into one body of Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Buti our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. 
then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Lord Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to descend under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we ask you, Lord, that being fed the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.